Welcome to the recording on ergogenic aids. And first of all, if you're unsure what ergogenic aids actually are, they're just going to be sort of methods of improving performance. Okay, so they're methods of improving performance. So straight away, when I talk about improving performance, you might realize that some of these methods are actually going to be illegal and some of them are going to be legal. So what I'm going to do in the first of these recordings is I'm going to talk about the legal methods. So in this specific recording, I'm going to talk about the legal processes. So these are ways that, you know, in theory, you could go out today and, and invest some money in and, and actually do and it would be perfectly legal within your sport or certainly the vast majority um, of sports. So just bear that in mind. And then in the second recording I'll make, I'll look at the illegal uh, methods and substances, things like steroids, things like gene doping, things like blood doping, for example. Um, and really, we're going to kind of break it down into, into four requirements that we're going to look at with each of our um, methods. The first of all is going to be say, what is this thing? So we're going to look at the aid, because of course we've got ergogenic aid. So what is this thing? We're also going to have a look at what is the advantage? You know, Why would you actually use this thing? What does it create in the athlete, which is advantageous. We're then going to have a look at any potential side effects. Okay, so is this going to do you any harm, this thing? Is it potentially negative or risky, or does it cause you any kind of health implications? And finally, we're going to have a look at which athletes that this particular method or each method would be relevant for. So would it be more relevant for example for endurance athletes or for power athletes and so on. Okay, so all that said, let's actually make a start. The first method I want you to be aware of, and it's probably something you've done reasonably regularly, is the idea of carbo loading. All right. So by by the way, I've actually got a separate video all about carbo loading. So I'm only going to touch on the concept in this particular video. When you need to learn a little bit more, go and have a look at that specific video that goes into it in more detail. But carbo loading is a seven day process or can be a seven day process whereby you encourage your body to store greater amounts of glyco uh, glycogen. So the first thing to say is that it's an advantage because we get an increase in glycogen stores. So we get an increase in glycogen stores, and that has a very simple impact, doesn't it? It means that when we're performing our endurance activities, we are less likely to deplete our glycogen stores in that sort of two-hour window that glycogen sort of provides energy for. So we're going to maybe have more than that two hours window's worth, um, and maybe we can keep going a little bit longer. Now, that's not to say that if you carbo-load, you wouldn't need to take on sort of sustenance during your race if you're a, if you're a road cyclist cycling for four or five hours, if you're uh, an ultra-marathon runner, running for very many hours if you're doing triathlons you still need to take on sustenance okay so, but this methodology can help you to store more glycogen it also means you can go harder at the start of the race without the sort of the, the threat of losing too much glycogen because the fat has not yet been oxidized what are the potential side effects well we might say sort of just generally about a notion of kind of bloating and heaviness so let's call that gastro problems so there might actually be problems whereby you know, you might actually experience kind of stomach pain, heaviness, these kind of things. Right, who's this relevant for? Well, it's definitely relevant for endurance athletes. Okay, so if you're doing anything sort of long duration. And I would also argue it's probably relevant for people like games players. Okay, so if you're, you know, you're a tennis player or a hockey player, for example, this, this process is going to be relatively relevant for you. So there's carbo loading. Another aspect of eating we should have an awareness of is what we would call pre-comp meals. You know, it's that question of when should I, when should I eat before I actually go and do my sport? It's kind of an interesting one, right? By the way, it does exactly the same thing as before. It increases glycogen stores we could probably add to that as well it might increase sort of blood glucose levels as well but in general terms it increases our glycogen stores to make sure we've got enough energy to actually uh, have that available energy when we need it any negatives well yes if we eat a lot and we get a big surge in for example um, blood sugar so we get what we might call sort of a hyperglycemia condition which means like a high blood sugar our body reacts by releasing a lot of insulin and we might experience what's called a rebound high